looking into the comments of the videos which you all are posting and asking doubts regarding uh, the you know topics which has been dealt by me i take this opportunity to thank iod academy iot and uh, they have been doing a wonderful job in conducting these kind of refresher programs for all the benefit of both the faculty as well as for the students and they have a very good feedback regarding the same so i thank iot academy at this juncture to uh, pro uh, providing an opportunity for present this views my views regarding you know in today's topic best practices in teaching and learning in, in higher education institutions so uh, moving on i would like to start with certain this particular session i would like to conduct it like a workshop a couple of questions would be asked and at the same time a uh, videos also would be posted so based on that please kindly do participate and let me know uh, what are the best inputs because all of us are there in the learning pr process so uh, today i have identified based on my research and uh, with uh, the introduction of nep 2020 what are the different best practices that could be incorporated uh, for the classroom as well as for the faculty in order to deliver the best because it is a student centric approach student based uh, learning which is happening in today's scenario so we wanted to identify so based on that i have come up with five basic best practices for the day it's a great takeaway for you under the five we have again certain uh, techniques and approaches say for example i'm starting with the first one that is the first best practice is research-based education uh, and uh, fortunately we find very few real researchers in the field uh, whether it is uh, medical science or whether it is uh, say forensic or uh, anything for that matter management or social science any of the thing so the real research is missing so NEP 2020 has given us a very good platform for us to go ahead and do the real research and present it towards the outside world both as a faculty as well as as a student so here the learning approaches and techniques i have given here uh, any of you who have uh, mobiles you can you know listening can take it on the screenshot inquiry based learning ppt also is being shared after the end of the session and uh, say for example there is a problem based learning research led and research tutored activities one by one i will tell because there are five into five uh, particular uh, methods and techniques for this particular session a total of 25 techniques i will teach you today and share with you today in order to understand how best we can improvise our classroom lectures so first is the research based education this is actually a student centered form of active education based on the practical approaches methods processes and results of research particularly the recent research okay and students learn as researchers i have published for this particular semester not year this particular semester i have published seven research papers along with the students and once the publication comes back it is we have mentioned the student i have mentioned them as research scholar though they are mba students some of them might be in the first semester some of them might be in the third semester but still i have mentioned as research scholar under the research guidance so here i have kept the division of roles between what is mine and what is the students to a minimum and then i have facilitated them i have supervised them and i have also mentored them like a researcher so this gives the expected outcome that they are young professionals who can investigate the problems with a critical spirit and also collect the evidence by referring to a variety of sources make rational decisions based on discussions or interactions with the trusted parties suppose if they are going out to a company and they are fully aware of the consequences that these decisions can have and are able to simplify and communicate complex content outside the 
academia. So this is much, much possible. I will tell you how in the, uh, in, in, in the coming forthcoming slides, one, one technique after another when I'm talking about. The next could be active learning. This is the second best practices. Okay, in the second best practice, we have certain techniques called as one minute paper, muddiest or clearest point, problem-based learning. All these have been taken on various research portals and various research uh, content has been taken from uh, the academia where they are referring to these kind of inquisitive uh, learning method methodologies, which is followed by various colleges also. So active learning occurs when the students are actively involved in the learning process and they participate beyond the passive listening in order to support their own learning. So it is an overarching concept for a range of empirically validated teaching strategies where I, as a teacher, will assign them and encourage them and support them in performing uh, to uh, make them understand how to learn effectively through meaningful activities. So learning thus becomes an active knowledge construction in which new information is being connected and related to prior knowledge of the student. So the student will improve because of improving the student engagement and outcome also, if you see, they can solve their problems. So problem solving skills comes into picture here in active learning. The third best practice I have identified is critical thinking. This may be defined as a careful, goal-oriented thinking and the ability to engage in purposeful and self-regulatory judgment based on rigorous intellectual concepts and principles. So this allows the students to orchestrate. Orchestrate means do it on their own and self-regulate their own learning strategies and describe the ability to analyze information very objectively and evaluate this information and come to an informed judgment. So this is possible by, there are various approaches I have given and the techniques also I have mentioned called as problem solving approach, spider web model is there, Oxford style debating. Let's see how you know it is working out. The next fourth best practice is self-directed learning. So this is basically a process in which the students take the responsibility for their learning. Basically, it is a student-centric learning, right? So it is the first and the foremost external management of the learning process, which can lead to high levels of active engagement as students. And they can take the initiative in their own learning and they can identify their learning needs and set their own learning goals formulate appropriate learning strategies, monitor and evaluate them on their own, and choose the resources and methods of learning in order to perform their best, OK? Everywhere I've given certain learning approaches and techniques. And the last best practice, fifth best practice is intercultural and inclusive education. This refers to a set of educational strategies which is developed to assess the teachers in responding to the many issues which is created by rapidly changing demographics of the students. So we have students from various backgrounds. I'm staying in Bangalore. I have students from north, east, east west, any part of you know uh, the India. Beyond including different values and beliefs and perspectives in students, teaching, I have to have something called as inclusive education which is predicated on the principle of equity for all students by removing the barriers to educational opportunities and success. So it is inclusive climate in the classroom and a sense of community among the students. So uh, intercultural teaching approach includes not only knowledge effective competencies, it also includes about histories, cultures, and contributions of diverse groups, but also it includes the competencies such as self-reflection, change of perspective, flexibility, openness, and tolerance. So let's move on to all the uh, 
I have given you five best practices. Let's look into all, in all the five best practices. The first best practice, what are the you know uh, learning approaches and techniques which is involved? The first one I would have mentioned as classroom, if you have taken a screenshot, because I want you to refer to this. This is the first slide, and this is the first best practice. Here I've given inquiry-based learning, problem solved, flipped classroom, team-based, you can see, right? So I'm just starting on the flipped classroom. Flipped or inverted classroom is a pedagogical approach that reverses the traditional learning environment. So the acquisition phase takes place outside the classroom with the student using online tools, videos, and e-learning platforms, etc. So students work through the theoretical background themselves, activating knowledge and comprehension. Uh, can anybody tell which will uh, associate with the flipped classroom? Any idea? Anybody, you can just unmute and say which will be the one best which has more interactive uh, sessions that could be combined with the flipped classroom. Because here, the face-to-face -face situation will be used for more discursive formats, that is collaborative and active learning, to reach for the number of domains of application analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. So the application of the flipped classroom allows the students to consolidate their knowledge and practice, and it also develops the students' communication, teamwork, and critical thinking. It also helps in problem-based learning, PBL. This is also one of the methods which I had mentioned, and also TBL, that is team-based learning. So can any one of you tell me which will be the best tool, online tool, or say uh, a site where the students can interact, which we can call it as a flipped classroom. Anybody? OK, there is something called as Google Sites, S-I-T-E-S. -E In Google Sites, if you see, it provides a massive, awesome uh, experiences towards the online tools where the students can post their assignments. Uh, earlier, during the COVID time, we started with online classes, correct? So we started with um, asking them, conducting the classroom sessions, and uh, assignments also were posted. But here, once you post the assignment, immediately the message goes to the student that the teacher has posted the assignment. So along with the assignment, what happens? The student has to create a blog. And additionally, what is to be done? So this is a very basic interactive. So active learning takes place the moment we start using this kind of online tools. Like we have Canvas, we have, you know, Plenty of tools are identified. So along with the, the you know classroom sessions, if you are able to post something like tools or videos, if we are using the e-learning platforms, it is easy for the students to understand and give a better performance compared to the previous methods. The next one is supposed to be called as the peer assessment of students' work. OK, this is the second method that you can take. As already mentioned, today I will give you 25 methods of you know effective learning sessions that can happen in today's scenario so the second one is the peer assessment peer assessment or peer review process provides a structured learning process for students to critic not to comment to critic and to provide feedback to each other on their work how many of us you know let's be very true to ourselves as teachers how many of us accept the feedback either from the management or from HOD or from the peers especially. How many of us do, do that? Um, let's think through that. But the students, we have to prepare them. Please accept the critic. That's why you know today morning we had a presentation, ED, Entrepreneurship Development. And I was the examiner for that. And uh, there is an app which the students had come out. Uh, it's, it's, it's for the tooth, dental, oral uh, care. So they are they were trying to say that this app will provide the service at a very lesser cost. And it will scan your mouth and tell you what are the flaws which is there inside. And it will try to understand and diagnose if anything 
is there apart from the regular you know um, re regular issues so now i just just asking them the questions we have another app uh, and we also have another um, what do i say another company which is right now using it so what is the usp unique selling you know propositions of yours in order to differentiate the moment you ask questions students you know they are taken aback and they it's 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 like you know they are not comfortable or you know they are stuck with the information but if it was asked by a peer their own classmate i'm going to ask a doubt so what is it so if they ask you know the students are very comfortable and because it's their peers you know their own classmates or batchmates who are asking the question and then they also come out with a lot of answers so questions also do take place answers also keep coming out giving some better alternatives for a particular problem yes or no yes so in that way we should encourage the peer assessment of students work rather than the teacher asking yes so it helps the students to develop a lifelong skills in assessing and providing feedback to others and also equips equips them with the skill to self assess and improve their own work the next one is case studies everybody what madam you are telling something very old case studies we have been doing it for quite some long time every you know now and then this is becoming a very big issue like as if we are not conducting no you are conducting we are conducting yes i do agree but case studies are the stories that are used as a teaching tool to show the application of a theory how many of us do that that is the question okay or a concept to the real situations depending on the goal that they are meant to fulfill we have to come out with the marketing you know uh, inputs we have to come out with the hr input we have to come out with finance input yes all those things are happening the cases can be in fact fact driven and deductive where there is a correct answer or there can be a context driven where multiple solutions are also possible okay uh, various disciplines have employed case studies including humanities social science science engineering law okay but how are we as management teachers are conducting the case studies inside the classroom and coming are we really getting the application that is in the case study here i also want to ask you something okay i will show you this how many of you have undertaken this is my assignment okay this is my assignment 8 uh mook swayam portal okay so how many of you do give this particular kind of questions to your uh students okay when we are coming out with a lot of learning okay here it says a group of students are presenting an international conference identify those who have failed to follow the presentation practices suggested in the course okay so uh, we have few students i'll read it out for you kindly uh, and then give me an answer priyanjali emailed his files to the organizers in advance to ensure they received the email kalpana rechecked the organizers laptops supported all the fonts and the audio visuals before the presentation rashmita neither brought a copy of the ppt in a pen drive nor a dvd nor checked her laptop was compatible olivia carried her files in a pen drive and checked whether her laptop was compatible with the lcd projector eric ensured to keep a hard copy in the form of transparencies and soft copies basabi reached to the venue 30 minutes late and gave her presentation without any rehearsals so how many of you agree which is you know now because nptel courses are also very tough for me to you know complete it madam because every semester complete one nptel which means in a year it is two so your performance appraisal will be based on two fdps one mdp and uh, say patent one patent and two scopus and one nptel or you know mooc swayam courses we have to take correct so apart from all these performance appraisals you have we have a regular classes yes regular duties so how do we you know do we have time to frame such kind of questions but 
if we frame such kind of questions we'll get a better input from the students and it's not only the student learns it's, it's also we also learn along with them so it's easy you know we can sit with the students ask them to prepare and here i've given a case study you know it's it's like a, a case study only shubham has a job interview at a it firm in two weeks and where he must give a presentation so although he is well versed with what he will present what is you know he also worries that he might get nervous due to this stage uh, you know fright what are the ways he could overcome so shubham has to develop a positive image yes shubham has to compare himself with more successful peers yes shubham should be more confident yes he should also practice and pre his uh, presentation on a small informal level yes with his peers it is that's what i told you the second uh, you know method best practice peer group is much more better and shubham should ask his more confident friend to proxy for him which is very wrong okay so that except for that one remaining all needs to be made correct shubham should be determined to do something about his fears yes we can have n number of rehearsals and then he can go to the stage for the uh, final presentation so like this we have to ask questions to the students that can happen only through case studies so that is very important i just wanted to give you a live uh, uh, i mean uh, the questions as well as with the answers so that it is very clear for us how because you might tell that you know madam we are doing case studies in the class but how are we doing in what way it is different gives a difference from the nap 2020 okay the next is the classroom discussion in small and big groups if you leave the classroom discussion to the students it will be like a fish market people say that you know is this a you know marketplace you know y'all are talking y'all are doing like this a lot of cross talks are happening no a classroom discussion it is a sustained exchange between among the teachers as well as the students with the purpose of developing the students capabilities or skills and expanding the students understanding both shared and individual of a specific concept or maybe you know we have a goal instructional goal based on that so the class discussions can be utilized in a seminar and lecture courses here in our college we have uh, for our mba students the first two semesters classes will happen and the end of the you know second semester they have something called as an internship they have something also called as a seminar project which is you know we just give them uh, some topics or they take on their own like say for example i have given to one of the student because i am doing a research paper on that swarm intelligence and its secondary review analysis based on breast cancer so uh, generally intelligence artificial intelligence is used variety now for almost in all the fields and in the medicine field also it's used in a higher rate but for breast cancer how it has been you know used in what way because you can avoid the any female can avoid the painful diagnosis through mammogram mammography through other methods okay and this is easily you know you can identify the uh, cancer cells and since i'm doing a research on that i told my student this is the one instruction and she has done very beautifully for the educational field so it has provided and i made her present in the class which has taken up a very heated discussion in the class where the peer group started asking questions how this can be how it will facilitate how that can be done why it is done so when we are going on asking why it gives a very fruitful and productive discussion in the classroom so this is another way of learning another way of best practice the fifth one is the journal clubs we all have clubs we have um, maybe you know sports club must be there uh, apart from sports club uh, you will have dance clubs music clubs cultural clubs yes how many of your uh, colleges you know where you have something called as a journal club a journal club is a group of individuals who meet regularly to critically evaluate recent articles in the academic literature i am from a uh, industrial psychology background a hr uh, lady so i will collect all the hr uh, related articles which is recently come 
I'll make the students, you know, sit for four to five, and then I will organize it around to a defined subject in basic or applied research. So typically, each participant can voice their view relating to several questions, such as the appropriateness of the research design, the statistics which is employed there, and the appropriateness of the controls that were used. Okay, we have various uh, uh, evaluations for uh, the you know from the statistical tools we have. Right. So journal clubs are basically used in the education of graduate or professional studies. And these help make the students become more familiar with the advanced literature in the field of the new study. So in addition, these journal clubs also helps to improve the student skills in understanding and debating current topics of active interest in their field. OK, so the sixth method is think, pair and share. Most of you are welcome to have a cross discussion and ask questions if it is not very clear. In think, pair, share uh, method, what happens? The students work individually on an active learning assignment or formative assessment activity, such as one minute paper or example problem or other topic, anything, but they have to think. Okay. And then, then the students compare the responses with the partner. So you have a partner. You can conduct it in the class very beautifully. And then synthesize a joint solution. OK, I have a problem like this. You make the uh, candidate come and sit. And then call another candidate who is you know, ready to pair with the, the him or her. And then some pairs share the, the, the entire class. So after the discussion, after coming to a solution, they have to share their content with the entire class. And this method helps to increase the frequency of the responses from quiet members of the class. Even members who are very, very quiet, very silent, even they would raise their hands and say that how this can happen, how it has happened, right? So they can ask. So think, pair, and share is another very wonderful method which can be used in the classroom. The seventh method approach can be inquiry-based learning. Here I have a video for you. But at the same time, I just wanted to give you the intro of uh, inquiry-based learning. Inquiry-based learning refers to a range of strategies used to promote learning through students, uh, you know, making them very active and increasingly independent. And uh, I have told by, you know, a few of my students, ma'am, when I ask questions, the teacher doesn't like, no, they have to be independent. We should allow them to ask questions. If you don't allow, then how things will, no, there are notorious students, I do agree, but when the student is really inquisitive, we need to encourage them. Okay, so that is the main concept of inquiry-based learning, making them independent, investigation of questions, investigation of the problems and issues, and, you know, and there is no single answer to that. You can show them a lot of uh, movie clips, okay, where, for example, uh, even the forensic, you know, detectives, how they use, what kind or what method, what technology they adopt, even the sim same similar we can use in order to come out with, you know, a framework. So when one after the one after the other, you know, each one is giving their inputs that can be formed as an ideal framework. I have given a framework here. A range of teaching strategies is consistent with the inquiry. Guided learning, including interactive lectures, discussion, problem-based learning, case studies, simulations, group projects, everything comes under inquiry-based learning. Uh, I will also add to this, uh, if anybody is not having any question, but I have my, uh, what is this, frequently asked questions. So from there, I will tell you what it is. From the teacher point of view, this inquiry-based learning is uh, you know focusing on uh, moving students beyond general curiosity into the realms of critical thinking and understanding you must encourage the students to ask questions and support them through the investigation process there are three uh, you know inquiries uh, which can happen uh, four inquiries i should tell put it this way so first one uh, kindly you know take down Confirmation inquiry. In confirmation inquiry, you give the students a question. Its answer also you are giving. 
and the method how to reach that particular answer also you are giving it to them in confirmation inquiry now what they have to do madam you're telling question also is given problem uh, is given and solution is also given and the method of reaching the answer is also given what the students will do what they will do i'll tell their goal is to build the investigation and critical thinking skills learning on how the specific method works okay in our olden days we would have you know somebody would have blindfolded us they would have drawn an elephant without a tail you just go have to draw the tail so it's a basic teamwork okay so similar to that lot of instructions are given so here the student is given a lot of instructions they have to come out with how i have solved because i have given them the question i have given them the answer i have given them the method but still they have to come with what are the critical thinking skills that i have that they have to frame it out and also build an investigation model how you know it, it's also you know something similar to mind mapping so how they have arrived or derived to that method okay so that is called as confirmation inquiry everything will not come overnight we need to understand first of all and experiment with this particular uh, method and then only we can take it for class honestly speaking the next uh, you know inquiry will be structured inquiry in the structured inquiry you give the students an open question and an investigation method okay an open question would be say say for example give me a topic uh, how the you know passengers in the bus say for example the first bus in uh, in bangalore what happens from banshangari to marathalli okay i'm telling the route or maybe you can take chennai from tambaram to say manali the bus is very uh, you know crowded like anything but if you look into the the frequencies are there but if you look into the second bus it will be completely you know empty or may say 50% only would have occupied so how do you avoid this you can ask this is a very simple you know uh, common uh, question which is posed to a student so now you are asking the student a question and you also ask please investigate on this and come to me is there any solution for this because only the first bus is fully it will be jammed second bus will be 50% then how do i solve this so that they must use the method to craft an evidence backed conclusion they should come with the evidence telling that madam this is what it has happened that is why the first bus is full and the second bus is less okay the passengers okay so uh, today being in the digitalized world we have to use a lot of digital services also take their help and give a proper appropriate questions to the students third one inquiry is called as guided inquiry you give the students a open question i'm just leaving it open typically in groups i will assign design the investigation methods you girls you guys you come out with the conclusion okay it's a open question okay that is called as guided inquiry and the next last one is supposed to be called as open inquiry here i give the students the entire time also the support and they pose the original questions that they in, in, investigate through their own methods and eventually present their results to discuss and expand regardless of the type inquiry based learning aims to develop the students the ability to analyze ability to synthesize and evaluate the information what somewhere i've heard this ability analyze synthesize is it bloom's taxonomy yes so today we are expected to use bloom's taxonomy all these indications whatever i have told inquiry based learning indications uses a very high level of thinking according to the bloom's taxonomy so we have to use this method in the classroom session inquiry based learning the next one is eighth method is bus groups bus group is a cooperative learning technique consisting in the formation of small discussion groups with the objective of developing a specific task it could be idea generation problem solving same problem you can take whatever i have you know mentioned like uh, for example the bus you know how do we reach to a consensus based on the topic and the topic uh, in a specified period of time maybe one hour of class two hours of class you take ask them to come to a conclusion 
buzz group encourages more efficient discussion it has to ob obviously and uh, if you give some controversial subjects that will be you know very nice because it will lead to a lot of questions and problems also okay so let's uh, look at the next method which is called as team based learning in the team based learning it is a pedagogical tool or strategy that engages the students knowledge through individual testing and group collaboration following individual answers students you know join teams and uh, you know uh, and work on certain problems appealing when where they are or when they are incorrect so this process motivates the students by holding them accountable to themselves and one another while introducing them to a variety of thought processes devoted to a single problem okay this actually also increases the motivation to introduce a fun gaming environment when you give a team based learning team based learning is supposed to be you know called in short forms tbl the next one is the problem based learning this is pbl it is in the introduction session only i would have told pbl and t, uh, team based you know tbl is very important so so pbl problem solving uh, problem based learning is a learning strategy where problems are introduced at the beginning of the instruction cycle to provide the context and motivation for learning it is always active and usually collaborative and uh, pbl typically involves significant cooperators can you see i have just shown a picture there how does pbl work complex and vague and ill structured he says and because they have presented the problem now it has to be assigned to different diverse groups so i will give it to the entire class each one will come out with you know um, some set of uh, say uh, some set of alternatives and those alternatives can be used as the uh, based on the cost effective method or based on the strength and weaknesses of that particular method we can come to a conclusion uh, that this could be the best method for um say solving a particular problem here i wanted to show you a video okay i will show you the video uh, this is you know in one of the uh, american schools it was uh, the curriculum group is introduced as you can see there are two things one is problem based learning another one is project based learning here in this particular video we are seeing project based learning
this is also very helpful for something called as community projects uh, our uh, college uh, new horizon college madam was telling we have something called as community projects which is at the end of the second semester students i have to identify uh, one particular uh, community problem and then bring out a solution for this taking a student for the field trip gives them a very uh, wonderful knowledge as you can see in the video coming out with the different problems and the problems are stated and this uh, you know asking the students what could be the best solution so this is one which you know we are also following it so this is problem based or project based learning this i will tell you what is uh, project based learning those who are finding it difficult can look at the subtitles where it is telling how in the conventional class we talk about the theories where we try to say use the concepts and how it is done today more application oriented So uh, with this video, it is very clear how you know both problem-based learning and project-based learning helps the students to be very successful and increase their learning. The eleventh uh, uh, approach and the eleventh tool that we are going to see the technique is research-led and research-tutored activities. The beginning, as I mentioned, each one of you kindly pick up uh, you know fifteen students, every faculty member. Uh, present in this group if you are coming from diverse backgrounds i'll be more happy please associate with your students you know we have here how we do it is like we have certain students for mentoring i have 18 students for to mentor so the same set of students comes to me for uh, internship same set of students comes to me for the seminar projects and same set comes to me for the project also final project also so it is when I start a particular research, it goes on. And at the end of, uh, say, when they are completing their MBA, they come out with flying colors with you know exposing all their talents in various uh, activities. So in research-led activities, it envisages activity in which students learn a lot about current research 
and in that particular discipline and are frequently an audience. So the emphasis is put on the research content and uh, research tutored activities, you know, um, it comes out through a cycle. The 12th technique can be used to add up to the you know 11th one. Research can be divided into individual phases, say for example, step by step, the research activities, formulating a general question. It, it could be anything. I just gave you a sample uh, of bus and you know the passengers where it is very crowded. You can take any kind of uh, the you know problem, whether it is community related or classroom related, day to day based you know related fertilizers, or uh, say for example moisture retaining the moisture content in the plant, anything whatever based on your passion or the student's passion, please formulate a general question, overview, take up a research uh, you know literature, ask them to come out with lot of as many materials as possible define the question planning the research activities clarifying the methods undertaking the investigation and interpretation and consideration of the results come out with a beautiful report and this will you know give a very good uh, presentation for both for students as well as for the faculty to expose your competencies the third uh, 13th method is the fishbowl so here, the students are asked to write down on the cards. We have few cards. One question regarding the course material. About the course material, they should ask one question, especially some aspects of the material that they do not fully understand. OK, I think it is very clear. The next one is the students deposit these cards with the questions in a fishbowl. OK, and the teacher draws several of them and asks to the class to answer them, asking them only to you know, answer them, either himself or herself. So this technique can also be understood as helping small groups of students can engage in the classroom discussion while trying to answer the raised questions. Another technique is called as fishbowl discussion, which helps to facilitate the group discussion during the class. A selected small group of students engages in a discussion about ideas or concepts on a given topic while the rest of the class observes and takes the notes this is another method we have something called as an inner circle and an outer circle so in that way so it's absolute imaginary you know how you will conduct your class and how will you manage your class and every class is very special so the 14th method or the technique would be jigsaw this is an active group organization model that using a student-centered approach supports the peer teaching as well as the cooperative learning. Students work in small groups to read information that has been organized into sections, section A, section B, section C. How, you know, I was just showing you a sample of uh, the NPTEL MOOC course. So a small sections, you know, divided a particular topic into different sections and give it to each groups. Each student studies the topic of the materials and becomes an expert on one part of the material, maybe based on their specialization or based on their uh, skills. You know, somebody might be good in presentation. Somebody might be good in understanding the context. Some students might be very good in uh, deliberating the diagnosis of the particular problem. Yes, please distribute and give. Then the students group work in groups to share their ideas. And they debate the different views and teach to teach each other in order to complete the task or project, which they can only done, uh, I mean, do it by cooperation. Okay, that's called as a jigsaw method. The 15th method of the technique is called as one minute paper. In the one minute or say it's just for two, I mean, we, we just tell it is one minute, but you can you do it for two or three minutes. It's a, a paper is a short paper that students individually complete in one minute and five minutes in response to a specific question asked by the teacher at the beginning, in the middle, at the end of the class. So it's a highly effective method for checking the student's project for providing a consistent means of communication during the classes. Minute papers provide students with opportunities to reflect on the course content, to summarize the information, and identify what they have not understood. OK, and the 16th method is called as muddiest or the clearest point. This is a variation from the one minute paper because this is designed for determining the gaps in students' comprehension. Some of them may not be able to understand. 
we have students with different abilities we have students with different competencies so the teacher here requests a one minute written response to the question about what was the clearest point in lecture or during this discussion i might go to the class so say for example today i'm going with hr balance scorecard that's a topic so i would start understanding making them you know uh, start with performance appraisal how the what are the different appraisal methods that is their uh, traditional methods contemporary methods and then ask them the question so this will you know aim the main aim of this technique is basically to have the students themselves to reflect on what they do and what they don't understand it is from the you know mud if you come or if you put somebody you know clearing out or so it's actually a clearest point anybody having any doubts you can ask the questions the 17th method would be think aloud pair problem solving in this technique the students pair up with one another and then they engage in the problem solving its aim is to enhance the collaborative work and problem solving as we already saw the video in which the students actively engage in the learning process by identifying the relevant information and applying it in the solution of a problem so think aloud pair and problem solving it's easily called as taps a taps method think aloud loud whether i can you know do this i can do that okay the 18th method is called as academic debate this is one of my favorite uh, topic and a favorite approach also so i always give you know say for example because my area is hr i'm just giving you uh, something called as a role play and not a usual role play i just give them something called as a reverse role play say for example they are taking the job of a supervisor role of a supervisor and the other person the role of a, a subordinate uh, they need to have the conversations for a particular problem and try to solve it in a positive way first and then in a negative way second and then what do i do i reverse the roles so now the same person who was uh, assuming as a or acting or playing the role of a supervisor will be the subordinate and the next person will be the supervisor so i reverse the roles and then again ask them to if it was a positive situation how you would have enacted and if it is a negative how would you react to it this is a very simple one you know i am using a role play as a method to come out with this you know uh, debate of how it was done or how best it could have been done okay but basically academic debate is just form a team of students who takes who loves to take part in debates and uh, usually the teams are supposed to defend their positions their facts and it could be you know uh, very competitive but still in a fair manner it has to happen both the sides will be presenting their reviews uh, with each other and the judge will be there in order to uh, understand how best they have done the debate okay so this is you know one of the uh, method which i you know always use i just love uh, the 19th method is called as logical errors fallacies or faulty you know reasoning we are very good at finding faults with others so here the students should get familiar with the logical errors and fallacies you give them a concept and then these are incorrect reasonings so you tell them what are the different you know uh, faulty things that you can find in this so frequently used by the speakers in public speeches incorrect reasonings okay in debates recently you know a very hot session is happening in tamil nadu uh, and uh, 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 a very hot session I, i i should also tell it is happening in bangalore also the debate and both private and public arguments are happening make the class like that it will be very productive very productive the students should you know learn how to reorganize these and how to face these illegitimate arguments or irrelevant points how they would face what you are telling is not valid what you are telling is you know that's wrong so how will you do it in a better way so these are often identified because they lack the evidence okay so that is one method the 20th method is spider web model spider web model is basically a discussion 
it is an adaptation uh, of the uh, Socratic uh, seminar that uh, you know puts the students uh, squarely in the center of the learning process with the teacher as a silent observer and recorder of what he or she sees the students saying and doing during the discussion. So here, the students are trained to work together collaboratively in solving the problems and to self-assess the process. The result is very deep, very deep. And high level of inquiry led and assessed by the students themselves. SPIDER has the acronym. I will just tell it to you. S stands for synergistic and P for practices and uh, I for independent. D for developed, E for exploration, and R for rubric. Rubric is, you know, it's the cornerstone of the whole process. It's to have a clear, concise rubric against this, which the students themselves can really assess on their own, whether it was done in a very good way or in a very bad way. OK? Because independent, because the teacher interferes, is, is not there. They are highly independent. They conduct, they do it, and they give you the, you know, I've given the you know how spider web discussion ha can happen. It can turn students into learning leaders. It can make them great. They feel that they are the best leaders. Okay, this is a book which I have presented here. And the 21st style, or it is called as a 21st approach or the technique for the you know best practice which can be had or adopted by the teachers. Who are teaching the or in the professions of higher education institutions can uh, you know accommodate this one of the method called as Oxford style debating. This is Oxford style debating. The students join opposing sides of a topic to intelligently exchange arguments and uh, you know they it, it is an affirmative. Okay, and even if you are mentioning something negative, it is you know for the productive of the team to come out with a lot of points. It's something similar to academic, uh, you know, debate. Okay, here the motion is the United States. For example, I've just given. Okay, so they, uh, you know, start. So the criteria for judging is one is the evidence delivery, interpretation, and rebuttal. Okay, here the chair will run the proceedings. Affirmative team is there. Negative team is also there, who comes with a lot of, uh, you know, um, trying to defend. This is uh, not there by their own ways. Captains of each team are there. Audience is there. You can also have similar to a role play. The 22nd method is called as scaffolding method. Here, the teacher models and demonstrates how to solve a problem for their students. Generally, for example, you know, in a pilot studying, uh, there is we have this assimilation models. In the for the management students, we can also have, Madam in finance, we don't have much. Those are telling. Yes, we do have. A problem, say for example, you can bring few traders and you know make them debate, ask them asking them, you know, how do you increase the financial status of a company, which is you know uh, right now which is sick. So the teacher here actually demonstrates on how to solve a problem for their students. Then the students try to solve the problem themselves by taking a step back and only giving a support where it is needed. Okay. The scaffold is a temporary support provided to the students to help them achieve learning the goal. Uh, most of us must be doing without even understanding this is the right method or this is the method that we are you know, uh, calling it. Say an example of an accommodation would be extra time to a summative assessment. We have formative assessment, we have summative assessment. So for where it goes, okay, based on your um, methodology. Okay, and the 23rd method is called as experiential learning component and customized courses. In the experiential learning, this is an engaged learning process whereby students learn by doing and reflecting on the experience. Experiential learning activities, it can include, but uh, say on hands-on laboratory experiments, uh, internships, practicums, and field exercises, study abroad, and undergraduate research, and the studio performances. Well-planned, supervised, and assessed experiential learning is also uh, possible in this. And it basically leads to the career development of the students. So it's a wonderful method. The 24th method is supposed to be called as the 
promoting student student relationship and student study groups it comes in that intercultural you know what i have told so inclusive and intercultural education can be implemented through cooperative learning as an effective strategy to promote the student student relationship it fosters the student interaction okay here we have three methods problem based learning again project based learning which i have covered and team based learning is also covered and the 25th the last method uh, approach and uh, technique called as learning in intercultural teams students have opportunities to learn from one another varied experiences and perspectives some st suggested strategies which you can use is choosing the texts that reflect on classroom demographics say people you know uh, in these you know surprised the north indian girls are uh, wanting to have the uh, or get married to the tamilian boys what was the need what was that it's demographics basically i'm talking about demographics you can create wonderful you know uh, concept uh, for the class uh, along with your study materials and share that stories that make the room for student sharing acknowledging the students with different identities and experiences you have come from this place particularly so how is your uh, uh, pronunciation and how do you do this leveraging the student diversity as an asset for learning and you can clearly communicate with the students about their expectations and norms explaining a particular purpose and task and criteria for the learning activities so these are all you know the 25 methods which have been identified by me uh based on various research in the google as well as in the in the internet that which are the best practices that could be adopted for the teachers who are teaching in the higher education institutions so five best method research based education active learning critical thinking self directed learning and intercultural and inclusive education these are the five best practices which i could say which could be adopted for the best uh, outputs from the students and as well as the community on the whole thank you thank you for providing me an opportunity to express my ideas